Hey, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming out to my talk. Um, how I got lucky. So we're going to be talking a bit about that. First, uh, I want to say thanks to Lorenzo Manis, uh, you know, everyone that's put on all the, the hard work for this conference. I'm um, enjoying it. You know, it's been uh, pretty great so far. So uh, hopefully I can keep that same momentum going. Okay, so a little bit about me. My name is Jeremy, um, developer out in Las Vegas. So uh, after all this pandemic craziness is uh, all done, whatever, if you find your way out to Las Vegas, feel free to hit me up. You know, we can chat up uh, about some crystal and, and all that good stuff. Uh, I'm a contractor, so I get contracted out to a lot of different companies to do, you know, different work. Um, you may have also come across one of my sites, uh, namecheck.com. So feel free to go check out that thing if you want. Um, I'm not going to bore you with uh, all the details about me or anything like that, but a uh, musician, I love doing home DIY stuff. You can learn more about it. Just uh, go ahead and follow me, GitHub, Twitter. That's usually where I'm kind of messing around. Okay. So I want to talk a bit about my journey going to Crystal, like kind of how I uh, came across and everything like that. So I'll start a little bit back. Uh, back in 2015, I actually got hired by a client to start working on a new Rails project. And it was going to be a pretty beefy uh, Rails project. Um, in 2016 was actually when I first learned about Crystal. And I, I don't remember exactly how I came across it. Might have been just a GitHub repo or something like that shared or, or whatever. So I started messing around with it and just kind of tiny little things here and there to sort of learn the language. And the more I messed around with Crystal, I, I, I realized, you know, I, it was really easy for me to pick up, right? Uh, being a Ruby developer already, I noticed that um, I, I was able to quickly translate a lot of my code over that I had already written in Ruby and I can move it over into Crystal. So I was like, okay, well, you know, sweet. The other nice thing was the fact that it was pretty fast. You know, if I started doing small little benchmarks between the code that I wrote in Ruby versus Crystal, then I noticed uh, things were a lot faster. Now, at this time, uh, I, I actually didn't have too much experience with compiled languages or anything like that. Everything I did was all in interpreted languages, Ruby or JavaScript or PHP and, and whatnot. Uh, so this was kind of a new concept to me being in a compiled language and actually realizing like, hey, you know, um, I could actually have this code. It could be all, you know, packaged up into a single binary and then boom, there's my application. I thought that was uh, pretty awesome. So about 2017, after um, having messed around with uh, Crystal for about a year or so, uh, the, the company I was working with, we decided, let's go ahead and try and port some of this, this Rails object or this, this Rails project that we were working on. Let's try and port some of this over into Crystal and see how it goes. Um, at this time, we were actually working with uh, Kamal and, you know, there wasn't really too much to work with uh, back then just because everything was still coming up and still new and stuff like that. So we noticed that because there wasn't a, as many shards out and, and libraries to work with, we were having to basically write everything by hand. And that became kind of time consuming considering we had a relatively small um, team. There was only three of us. So we had to uh, manage this giant Rails project as well as all the other projects we were working on. And then, you know, sit there and try and port this in. So it didn't really work out for us uh, too well at the time. Now in 2018 was uh, when we actually learned about Lucky which was uh, cool. We just happened to come across it. Uh, about 2018 is when all these frameworks start coming up. You start seeing Amber coming up and uh, Lucky. And uh, everyone's starting to really get into building more and more libraries for uh, the, the Crystal uh, web ecosystem, right? Um, now, when we learned about this, we were like, OK, well, let's go ahead and give this a shot. We can. Uh, 
see how you know this looks. So what we decided to do was we actually had another project. Um, now this other project was it was in Rails. It was hefty, like a super hefty project. We wanted to move this project into a CDN, but with the, the current build of that application, it just wasn't going to be possible. So we knew we were going to have to rewrite the application. It was just a matter of, well, do we rewrite it in Rails or do we go something like Go or Elixir or, you know, whatever. Well, since we had started taking a look at Lucky at this point, um, we decided, well, let's go ahead and take the public facing portion of the application, right? So basically split it up to where you have the, the, the front facing and then the member side. So what we did was we'll keep the member side on Rails, but we'll take the front end portion and rewrite that in Lucky and then see if we can uh, get something going. So we started developing on that and it was actually going pretty quick, which was uh, uh, pretty amazing. Once we started doing that, that's when we realized that uh, this is really going to work out. It, it's going to be nice because Lucky was uh, helping us basically, uh, you know, swaddle us, if you will, um, wrapping us up in a nice blanket of compiler errors left and right, showing us how horrible developers we are. Uh, we started going through all these steps of, uh, you know, let's add this, let's do this. And now we weren't really trying to innovate at the time. All we wanted to do is one-to-one. -one. If the Rails version did it, the Lucky version also needs to do it. So as long as we kept that a one-to-one, -one, then uh, we we're cool. We actually ended up deploying to production just later that year. So it was about um, April of 2018 when we learned what Lucky was. And it was October of 2018 when we actually deployed to production. Now, uh, this is uh, kind of a crazy task to think about um, because Crystal's still relatively new, Lucky's still relatively new. Uh, we had no idea what we were doing. And here we go, pushing this up to production. And we ended up profiting from this, which was uh, amazing. Now, these stats here, these are pretty conservative. I would say that uh, we, we probably did a little bit better than this, but I wanted to keep the, the numbers on more of a conservative side. Uh, we noticed that we were at least getting about a three times performance boost by being over in Lucky. And a lot of that is contributed to the fact that it's just written in Crystal. So obviously being a compiled language, we're automatically gonna be uh, faster. But now with our queries, like all the, the SQL queries we're making, whatever, we didn't go and optimize them or anything like that. We just literally, if the, the Rails app did it, Lucky app's gonna do it. Boom, three times uh, performance. We were able to drop one of our servers. We were run, running on um, three dedicated servers and we went down to two. Now, uh, we could actually drop the app down to one server, but uh, the second is more uh, redundancy. We noticed we're using a lot less CPU usage, memory usage. The deployments became way easier. And uh, by moving over to Lucky, we had so much more confidence. Uh, there would be some nights that we would do a deployment on the Rails app. And it was basically, we're not sleeping tonight because we don't know what's going to break. With the, the Lucky app, we were able to know that, hey, if it compiled, we could uh, push it up, deploy it, and everything's good. So the deployment process was basically became, we build the Lucky binary, we build the assets, we zip it up, and um, push it up to Elastic Beanstalk. Now, this app that we pushed to production in uh, 2018, so a little over two years in production crystal is not a small time app. This isn't, you know, like a uh, landing homepage or anything like that. This is actually a multi-million dollar application. Um, I mean, I, I'm not gonna get too deep into the statistics of the app or anything like that, 
but last I checked and I ran a query on how many users were in the database or in the table, it was millions. So it's not a small time app. I mean, we're talking a massive uh, app that we've been running in uh, production for over two years now. Okay, so <clears throat> let me just start talking about actually what Lucky is and everything like that. I've mentioned it, you know, you can see I'm even sporting the Lucky T right now. <clears throat> so Lucky is a web framework. It's written in Crystal and it uh, helps you to work quickly, catch bugs at compile time. So basically in development is when we want to catch the, all of the, the bugs and everything like that. If your app is solid in development, then it's going to be solid in production. <clears throat> Lucky uh, started, this dude, Paul Smith, uh, 2017. So at the time, Paul was working for ThoughtBot. And uh, that was actually one of the things that sort of drew us to uh, Lucky itself was the fact that we saw um, Paul, as well as another guy, Edward, they were both working at ThoughtBot. So we we're like, hey, if ThoughtBot is using this framework, then maybe this is something solid. Uh, <laughs> now, if ThoughtBot, just the fact that uh, we were Rails developers, so we were very familiar with the company, we we're like, okay, you know, hey, uh, this could be something pretty neat to take a look at. Now, Lucky has a, um, some philosophies, you know, as opposed to uh, all the frameworks, I mean, there's tons of frameworks that you can choose out there. And some of them are just amazing. You know, so many people put a lot of uh, effort into all these different frameworks. Um, so, you know, for Lucky, we have to start thinking about like, well, uh, why choose Lucky versus any other framework? Um, out there, right? Why not just stick with Rails or something like that if that's what you already know? And, you know, that's fine because those are great. Uh, one of the things that we really want to focus on with Lucky, though, is community first. Uh, now, th this sort of uh, is starting to really hone in more <clears throat> as Lucky progresses because we want to make sure that our community is very inviting, uh, welcoming, we're always helpful. Anytime you drop into our Discord chat or whatever, if you have questions, there's always someone around that's like, hey, you know, yes, I definitely want to help you out and everything. <clears throat> Nothing feels worse than if uh, you go into some community for some new project and you're like, hey, I'm new, you know, I want to do this thing. How do I do X? And then someone responds with, well, just don't do that right then obviously you're kind of turned off or someone tells you to go you know read the manual I'm like all right well obviously you guys don't want to help so maybe i don't want to work with this so we want to make sure that um if you come and hang out with us even if you're not really working with lucky maybe you're just kind of you know, want to hang out you know chat about one of the other frameworks or whatever we're welcoming come on uh come hang out Lucky also wants to focus on catching bugs in development. We do this by really focusing on the compile time errors. Uh, we want to make sure that all the error messages that you get are very easy to understand. They kind of guide you like, hey, here's an error that happened, but you can go ahead and try these sets of things to fix that error. Um, we want to do a lot of uh, conventions to sort of remove some of the guesswork. Uh, in a lot of cases, you know, you, you might say, well, you know, I'll write code like this, and uh, you spend less time having to read through all the documentation just to figure out, like, how do I do this one thing? The other thing is we do an extra focus on type safety. Now, Crystal by itself is already going to make everything type safe, right? So anything you work with in Crystal is already going to have some type safety. But there's some additional steps that Lucky takes. For example, like um, passing hashes around. Uh, a hash itself isn't necessarily fully type safe because you can have <clears throat> string keys and string values, but the string keys could have typos in it and whatnot. So uh, Lucky wants to focus on those sort of things. <clears throat> Excuse me, Woo, losing my voice here. 
Uh, Lucky wants to focus on those sort of things. So that way we can catch those in development before you ship that off to uh, production. Looks like my time's running uh, pretty quick here. So I'm gonna pick up the speed a little bit. Uh, Lucky also comes, batteries included. So we wanna make sure that as a full featured web framework, we're giving you every, all the tools you need or at least most of them. So we come uh, built with uh, asset compilation using Laravel Mix. And if you haven't seen Laravel, it's a, a PHP web framework, and they have this tool called Mix, which sort of wraps uh, Webpack uh, just with a few additional niceties. And we decided, you know, we're not going <clears> to <throat> build our, <clears throat> woo, uh, we're not going to build our own tool. We're just going to go ahead and use that tool because it works well. So why not just pull that in? Uh, we have user authentication. Um, so you can generate an app uh, with users able to log in and all that kind of stuff. If you come from the Rails world device, it's kind of the same thing. Emailing with SendGrid out of, um, uh, by default, but we also have a bunch of other um, uh, options there. Uh, browser automation for testing. So uh, we can spin up a Chrome driver and do whole Selenium type testing out of the box for every generated uh, Lucky application. Obviously, we're going to have the ORM, the serialization, and, and all that kind of stuff. And we have a bunch of other stuff coming. <clears throat> Some of the unique things that you'll see with Lucky is that the HTML is actually written in Crystal. So you don't write HTML itself. You write uh, Crystal methods, and that will go ahead and generate your HTML for you. Now, I, I know what a lot of you are saying. You're like, oh, I, I don't know if I like that. Um, I, I actually said the same thing when I first saw Lucky. I was like, well, all my views are already written in HTML. So, you know, well, technically they were written in Slim, um, to be fair. So they weren't even really written in HTML. But it, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow when you're moving that over. The nice thing, though, is by writing in Crystal, this allows us to ensure you have proper uh, nested HTML, closing tags where they need to be. Um, and then we can also add the type safety on saying, hey, you know, you just wrote a tag that doesn't exist. It, um, you know, you need to do certain things if you're using, uh, let's say, SPAs or, you know, your own random tags. Uh, we also have a schema enforcer. The schema enforcer basically ensures that your database is set up properly. You know, if you have um, certain tables and columns and, and whatever, um, we do preload warnings for catching N plus one queries. We break out business logic into separate operation objects. Um, we have these needy objects, needy, where um, your objects need specific things, like let's say uh, your homepage needs the current user, right? So you can display the current user's username and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, type safe database queries, which I'll try and show here in a second. Um, yeah, anyway, so what does Lucky look like? Yeah, not that, just kidding. Um, if, you, if you're on a Mac, it's just uh, brew install. Uh, you do a little tap, brew install Lucky, and uh, boom, you're off. If you're not on Mac, th and then you can just uh, clone the Lucky CLI repo. Um, I'll have some links later, whatever. And then once you have Lucky installed, it's as simple as just running Lucky init, which is going to open up a wizard. And the wizard's going to ask you some questions about uh, your application. So uh, what's the name of it? And do you want a full or a, um, an API application? A uh, couple of little options there. But if you want full, you want to generate views, you want to do um, browser automated testing, uh, assets, and all that kind of stuff. Or do you want it slimlined? Uh, you're just doing API, so headless, no uh, markup or whatever. And then do you want to generate authentication? Uh, if so, this is going to generate a user. It's going to generate um, serialization for the user on both the API and the, the full side. So if you do full, it's going to give you uh, login, logout views, uh, registration, and all that kind of stuff. 
Uh, once it's done generating the application, uh, it's going to give you a couple of steps. Go ahead and CD into that uh, directory. You're going to configure get your database real quick, run your script set up, and then you're going to run Lucky Dev, and boom, your app is uh, set up. Our script setup, what it does is it runs a system check for all app dependencies. Maybe your app requires uh, Redis um, to be booted or Elasticsearch to be booted before. So we can actually catch that before you actually boot it and um, miss a portion of your application. Uh, we'll go ahead and install the, the, the dependencies for assets, the crystal, create the database, make sure everything's all set up and even run some initial database seeds if um, there's certain data that needs to be ran every time you uh, boot up your application. Then when you run Lucky Dev, what that does is it hooks into a process manager and you have uh, several different choices here. Oh, hey, this is telling me that uh, I'm done. Okay, thank you. So um, I still have a few more minutes. My uh, uh, talk is a little bit longer than I anticipated. Sorry about that, but uh, we'll try and hurry up here. Anyway, so you get the, um, the process manager if you're using Overmind or Foreman or something like that, hooks right into that and it's gonna boot uh, multiple processes. And then boom, now your application is up and running. And the nice thing is Lucky comes with browser sync. So this allows you to, uh, whenever you make a change to your code base, we're gonna go ahead and recompile either the assets or the crystal side, depending on whatever uh, you need and refresh your browser for you. So as you're developing, uh, the Lucky uh, system is automatically saying like, okay, let's go ahead and recompile the code and set that up. You go to the, the page and there's your initial homepage. Now, Lucky is not an MVC framework like other frameworks. Um, uh, we break things out into a, a lot of different other uh, groupings. So if you're familiar with MVC, model views and controllers, Lucky doesn't actually have controllers. Instead um, of a controller that has multiple actions, we do a class structure where each action is its own class object. And then pages, since they're written in uh, Crystal, they're also going to be their own um, class objects, the models, queries, and our operations. The operations are where your actual um, business logic of saving to the database and such, that's actually going to happen there, as opposed to models where in a lot of MVC, your models are um, let's go ahead and query the database with the model, let's save to the database with the model, let's handle all our bad, uh, business logic in the, the models and whatever, we separate that logic out. So model sets up your database association and then querying happens in a query object and saving happens in a saving object. So I guess you could say it's, I don't know, make up a, I don't know if there's already a terminology for this, but whatever. So let's take a look at a couple of these real quick. So this is an action class. So you see we set up a class. We have a little DSL for handling the, the routing. And then we specify the, um, we're going to render an HTML called an index page. Now, this is uh, one of the type safety things. If you don't tell the action that it's going to render or redirect or something like that, it's going to raise a compile time error for you. Now the page, we said we're going to render an index page and you can see that there's that needs the taco query. Um, so if actually, if I was to go back real quick, you can see I'm actually passing in my uh, tacos. Uh, it's almost lunchtime here for me. So um, I'm starting to get hungry. Uh, here's a, the, the content H1 generating an H1 tag. And then you can see this mount. Um, we have this concept of HTML components, which allows you to take uh, snippets of your HTML that's reusable all over and um, we pass those around. Here's an example of the model. So pretty simple. We define a couple of columns. We have some associations and uh, map those to the, the database. And then as far as the querying goes, um, this allows us to do type safe queries because since we know what the columns are, we generate methods based on those columns. So you can't just misspell a column name and say like uh, select all where um, you know 
and now to misspell now to or, or whatever. Uh, operations. So again, operations are where we save records to the database and we can actually add in um, safely permitted fields. So when you pass in your uh, external parameter data into a save operation, then we're only permitting certain fields to actually be accessed and saved to the database. Um, so here's uh, that uh, save operation being used in an action. Um, we're just passing in uh, params, just whatever comes at us, but it's okay because we're only permitting um, certain fields and right there. Okay, so that's the basics. Um, we're headed close to 1.0 as Crystal gets uh, closer to 1.0. We're also getting closer to 1.0. So we have a couple of things in the works as far as new features uh, coming along. Uh, Breeze, which is going to be like a development uh, dashboard for tracking uh, logs uh, for queries and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, Fusion, which will be sort of a type script, uh, type safe, um, uh, reactive JavaScript. I don't know. Uh, Paul has some some ideas on that. So if you happen to be talking to Paul, you can ask him more about Fusion. Pulsar, which is uh, uh, added into Lucky Now, and it's going to become more of a first class citizen for PubSub type stuff. Uh, we're doing some updates to our ORM, the router, more customizations on the, the wizard, and um, tons of stuff like that. Here's a quick preview of what Breeze looks like, um, at least the last screenshot that we had of it. Uh, if you want to join us and come hang out and stuff like that, you can find us GitHub, uh, Lucky Framework slash Lucky. Um, find us on Twitter at uh, Lucky Framework. And we do have a Discord. You can find that on the, the website and whatever. If you want to learn, uh, luckycast.com was actually updated today by uh, one of our core team members, Stephen. So check out Lucky Casts uh, on dev.2. You can find some uh, Lucky articles, the website. And actually a community member shortly portly wrote a sort of tutorial. So I can post those links into the, uh, the Discord later. And then finally, uh, if you notice I'm wearing the Lucky T, uh, we've actually given out quite a few of the Lucky T-shirts. If you contribute to Lucky, um, you're most likely gonna be getting a T-shirt due to pandemic and uh, stuff like that. I haven't been able to ship them uh, international, so outside of the US. But I'm hoping that next year we'll be able to start getting back on track. And I know there's a few of you that have earned a shirt already that um, I'm still sending to. Anyway, um, that's my time. It looks like I'm up. So I appreciate it. And uh, I'll be around for uh, questions and all that stuff.